TV 18. Hello and welcome. You're watching News Center, and I'm Parikshit Lutra. A review of 14 production linked incentive schemes is underway across ministries, and a high level meeting could take place very soon. Sources say the government is considering whether the investment targets mentioned in some PLI schemes are uh, realistic. For example, the auto PLI requires vehicle OEMs to make an investment of 2,000 crores over five years. Officials are reviewing whether the high investment uh, targets have left many companies out of the PLI ambit. The government is also trying to understand whether the price caps in some PLI schemes are a hurdle to manufacturing growth. For example, incentives under mobile phone PLI are uh, for phones costing more than rupees 15,000 and PLI for electric two-wheelers is for vehicles costing up to 1.5 lakhs. So the government is considering whether the eligibility criteria should only have an incentive cap and not a price cap. Officials are also trying to understand how certain OEMs are making future investments in PLI-targeted sectors without claiming incentives. And does this mean the eligibility criteria has restricted manufacturing and constrained the number of players that can actually participate? Joining me now to take this forward is Pankaj Mohindru, Chairman of the uh, India Cellular and Electronics Association and Sagar Shah, Tax Partner at EY India. Uh, Pankaj Mohindru, if I can begin with you, if we look at the mobile phone manufacturing sector, the electronic sector, do you think the, the PLI criteria has been restrictive and has constrained the number of players uh, that can participate and has not allowed uh, the, the manufacturing to increase to its true potential? I don't think so. The, I think the mobile phone scheme the, is hugely successful and the results are only there for you to see. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the basic uh, fundamentals mm -hmm. of the scheme. Uh, the basic fundamental of the scheme is mm -hmm. that India has to capture a certain portion of the global market, right? How do you do that? Your first pillar is that the JVCs, lead firms, the global value chains should come to India. They should have, they should participate in a certain number. You are targeting, say, 20% uh, of the global market. And that is where the uh, policy making turned on its head for the first time, that instead of, uh, you know, frittering away export incentives to all and sundry, have them very targeted, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, frugal scheme in terms of how you are able to optimize the outcome of the scheme. So first was the GVCs, then the how to create uh, strong Indian companies who can then become competitive and participate uh, globally and have a certain share in the global market. It's, it's a long haul as far as Indian companies are concerned. It will take time. But you are, we are seeing that it's, they are also nicely kicking in. So overall, the PLI scheme for mobile phones is extremely successful. And uh, nobody has been, uh, is feeling deprived or has been left out of uh, the scheme. Uh, all possible, uh, I would say, efficacy is 90% plus. On, on the IT hardware, PLI 1.0, I think the outlay was... Mm -hmm. Uh, not enough. And now there is a criticism that uh, the scheme which is uh, being uh, uh, formulated PLI 2.0, the investment criteria is uh, high. Is that your question, uh, Parikshan? Hmm. That's right. A high investment criteria and also the price cap. For example, in the mobile phone PLI scheme, the incentive is for mobile phones manufactured which cost 15,000 rupees or more. Uh, do you think uh, no, this price not. cap should it's be a, there, Mr. Mohindra? No, 15,000 and above because we wanted, uh, there was a clear direction and a clear strategy that below 15,000, it is the Indian companies which can become globally competitive. So under 15,000, it is a historic decision that it is reserved for Indian companies for the first time. The scheme is tailor-made uh, to uh, nourish and create Indian champion companies. Above 15,000, which is above $200 at that time, is important because we want to capture the mid and the top segment. India should not be known as only an entry-level producer. And as you've seen, uh, the most valuable ecosystems in the world are producing and exporting out of India. 
our export this year of mobile phones will be 80,000 crores plus. Now, coming to the investment right. criteria in IT hardware, uh, the challenge was that some of the big global GVCs uh, have already made investments in India, and those investments did not fructify into uh, good revenue for them earlier. So a very big concession has been made for these uh, companies, which is that investment in the entire supply chain for those companies will be counted as their investment. So this is a, a change which has been made in policy making, and uh, that is a very, very good thing. Uh, and I think this will sink into uh, how these companies perceive the IT hardware uh, policy, PLI 2.0, and we will have everybody onboarding uh, the PLI 2.0 of IT hardware. Right. Uh, Sagar Shah, to get you in at this stage, uh, the 14 PLI schemes, uh, do you feel that there are schemes where the eligibility criteria, uh, the localization criteria needs to be reviewed in order to maybe allow a larger number of players to participate? So I think uh, the point one about investment, and if you see especially some of the PLIs like the auto PLI, and clearly there is a gap when it comes to uh, the investments, especially for OEMs where the limits are very large. And typically if you see an assembly uh, unit that a two-wheeler uh, EV manufacturer has to do, the cost of the investment of 1,000 crore is a large number. While some of the large players would be able to do it, uh, but the startups and the mids market is going to be clearly hit. And that is where the challenge is to say that the investment limit is very high. Even for the auto components, one can say that, mm -hmm. uh, especially because of the AAT products, you know, the limited products in the EV sector or the hydrogen fuel cell technology, which is being uh, looked at. The challenge here is to say these are all futuristic technologies, a lot of these things, and the investments which are there, which are expected today are not happening. It will happen over a period of time. So one thing that clearly can be seen is to say that mm -hmm. uh, can companies get a larger period of time beyond what is being uh, specified in the scheme today. I think this is something which is clearly asked of the industry as we talk of it uh, as of now. Even in some of the other PLIs like food, for instance, the investment criteria and most of the companies, whatever was proposed by them, they had to commit to get that investment. And that clearly is becoming a challenge uh, also for some of the, I, I would say, uh, hygiene and uh, procedural issues. Like what do you mean and how are you going to consider capitalization vis-a-vis -vis actually put to use? Will you be allowed to consider investments for machines which are just purchased or invoices paid? So if some of these flexibility is bought in, many mm. companies will be able to get the benefit beyond what is it right now. Coming to your other point on valuation, right. I think it's an extremely important point. And I think the domestic valuation, which is clearly one of the important criteria that the government has put forward to say that this is what should happen. But in the ecosystem that we have, especially mm -hmm. for some of the industries, not having those kind of uh, products still uh, make, being available in the country. While in auto, for instance, they have uh, given mm -hmm. some products uh, to say that sales, for instance, or REM that you'll be allowed not to consider. But it's still a long way through. More importantly is that the SOPs mm -hmm. which are expected to say how this working will be done and the discussion on to what level have or a component manufacturer to go to his tier one, tier two, tier three vendors to find out what will be the valuation is a challenge. Mm. And if these things are uh, to an extent, mm. if the government looks at to say, can we make it easier for the companies to look at this part and do the DBA calculation, I think a lot of things will become far more better than mm. uh, what they are. Uh, other than this, I would still say that companies right. are looking at investing. Sagar? Uh, reaching out to the criteria uh, and seeing how this can happen better and better. I, I believe that little bit of extension of period for some of the PLI schemes uh, in terms of the current regime, what is there, would help a lot of companies to come into this, uh, uh, the, get okay. the benefit of the scheme. Sagar, very quickly, I would also like to ask you, let's see the ACC PLI scheme for that matter. Three companies have been selected under this, Rajesh Exports, uh, Ola, and Reliance Industries. They have been selected for the ACC PLI scheme. The government is also seeing that 
there are other players who are setting up shop, who are committing investments, setting up factories without uh, taking PLI incentives or applying for uh, this scheme as well. Uh, do you feel there is any need to revisit the criteria uh, as a result? So I think this is more of a policy decision. And if you see the ACC battery PLI, it was a bid-based PLI. Uh, and clearly the intention of the PLI scheme is to ensure and see that the larger players invest and the entire ecosystem falls in place. That has been the intent. And if you see the intent of the scheme in terms of that, I think it is fair to say this is how it has been done. Clearly, there will be some other companies who are very closer to it, large investments happening. Uh, but I think when it's a choice to say that this is how it has been put at that point in time, I think we'll have to live with it at least at this point in time. Unless the government thinks of in many other PLI schemes to come with PLI too, like it has happened in telecom and pharma and few of the other sectors. And that is what the need of the R should be to say that can we look at focused PLI incentive again for some of the much needed investments which are required. And I think that's something that one can think about. Okay. I'll get in. I'll get Pankaj Moindru. Uh, Pankaj Moindru, any feedback that has gone from, uh, from you to the government recently on improving these PLI schemes, easing the compliance norms or uh, easing the investment criteria? See, I cannot comment on other PLI schemes other than from my own sector. Although we are the pioneers of PLI scheme, so I do keep reminding uh, new incumbents, both in the industry and the government, that the PLI scheme is for global leadership. It was not a scheme for MSMEs, etc. Uh, it is for global leadership to bring GVCs to India and to create Indian champion companies. Because a, a great economy, a tiger economy, always has a large number of mm. large companies with a global footprint. India cannot uh, become right. a leading economy of the world, the number two, number three economy of the world with uh, you know large per capita income unless we have these large 100, 150 large companies who are in the Fortune 500. This is the aim of uh, right. the PLI schemes. And uh, keeping that in mind, okay. if you know, some rejig is required or some something supplementary is required or some course correction is required. I'm sure a sector who, which puts its head down, works diligently with the government. I'm sure the government is going to uh, respond very quickly. What Then what do we do All with right, the uh, MSMEs and so on? You see, it's the mother hen and the principle of the engine and the bogies coming behind it. Uh, the second tier, third tier, fourth tier companies, which are essentially the MSMEs, will fall in place once mm. you have the giants uh, coming out of India, mm. the GVCs operating out of India and Indian companies becoming large global players. They'll carry the ecosystem with them and... Uh, they will act like a mother hen and the chicks will be uh, safe under that. This is the simple principle with which okay. we have to go forward. Second important thing is that right. we We've missed the manufacturing bus. Yes, please. Uh, we have run out of time, sir, but thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC and I'd like to thank Sagar Shah for joining us. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We get you more uh, big stories uh, from the aviation sector and the automobile sector when we're back.